rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mrs. Allman, can we have the roll call, please? Mrs. Britton. Mr. Deschaux. Here. Mr. Eifert. Mr. Emig. Here. Mrs. Herman. Here. Mrs. Meese. Here. Mr. Rawhauser. Here. Mrs. Whitmer. Here. Mr. Wolverton. Here. Seven present. Thank you. Just uh, so you're aware, Mr. Eifert. His mother fell and broke her shoulder, so he is with her tonight, and Mrs. Britton is uh, currently working. Our first item on our agenda is uh, presentations by Mrs. Wickenheiser and Mrs. Fasick. Good evening. We have Mrs. Almond who's going to bring up our PowerPoint tonight. And I brought with me tonight some fantastic students behind me, and they're a little nervous, I'm going to tell you that. But I said all they had to do tonight was show up. That's it. Show up and look great, and they've done that. So anything they say from this point on is just an extra bonus, kiddos. Okay? So behind me, and I will introduce them, we have Maya DePato, first grade. Maya, you want to stand up? So Miss Maya is a first grader. We have Alex DePato. Alex is a second grader at Lib Elementary School. We have Luca Hetrick. Luca is one of our third graders at Lib. And we have Miss Natalie Mung, who is a fifth grader at Lib Elementary School. So we're going to present uh, a little bit about the school-wide positive behavior interventions and support. So I'm going to start, and then we're going to roll over to our book vending machine, because that goes with our PBIS program, and it correlates perfectly. So what is school-wide PBIS? I'm sure you've all heard of those letters, PBIS, and you probably wondered what does it even stand for. So PBIS stands for Positive Behavior Interventions and Supports. The kids behind me know it as PBIS. So this is evidence-based. So this is not something that we just pulled out of our pocket at Dover Elementary School or North Salem Elementary School. And I should add that every district in Dover Area School District uses a school-wide PBIS approach. So while we're speaking on behalf of Lib Elementary School, what we're doing at Lib is exactly what Dover Elementary, North Salem, the middle school, and Weigelstown and the high school, we're all doing the same thing. So when these kiddos behind me become middle schoolers and become high schoolers, they will know exactly what proud behavior is. They will have their proud t-shirts, and many of them will probably still wear their proud t-shirts. So PBIS, the four major positives, increase academic performance, which again, we want all of our kiddos to be increasing their performance. We want to increase safety in our classrooms, on our school bus, on our walks home. We want to look at a very positive school culture. We want our kids to want to come to school every single day. And then, of course, we want to decrease problem behavior. And again, the kids behind me can say that if there's problem behavior, it's addressed. But I can tell you the amount of problem behaviors are significantly decreased because of our school-wide PBIS initiatives. And it truly does take a village to become a school-wide PBIS school. So why do we look at a school-wide approach of PBIS? Well, first of all, it reduces challenging student behavior through, and you'll notice I underlined some keywords, proactive, positive, and consistent manner across all school settings. So this is in the cafeteria. This is on our playground. This is on our school buses. And secondly, again, it approves academic achievement and social competence, which is extremely vital, especially as we look at COVID and coming out of COVID and mask wearing, and the fact that our kids have not been able to collaborate with one another because of this pandemic. So again, this PBIS approach covers all of those key components that we need to make sure we're touching for our kiddos. We then look at our school-wide system for student success. And you can see on the left-hand side, it's academic systems, and the right side are behavioral systems. And I'm a true, avid believer that we cannot increase 
student performance without looking at behavior. If kids want to be in school, if kids know they're cared for, then their academic achievement will do nothing but increase. So you can see the green part of our triangle focuses on in, in universal interventions. That would be all of our kiddos. So the kids behind me, they're all tier one. They're all those kiddos who are doing their job. They're the kiddos who are getting those proud tickets. We look at a tiered group intervention. Those are the kiddos who are struggling a little bit, might need a little bit more help, might need a little bit more guidance, might not have the home that the kids behind me have in which parents are supporting them. So our job as school counselors and principals, deans, interventionists, classroom teachers, is to give those kiddos the interventions that they so deserve. And then we look at some intensive individual interventions. And again, you're looking at one to 5% of our population. So at every one of our buildings, whether it's Live Elementary School or the high school, we do have kiddos who need that intensive individual interventions. And again, kids need to be taught positive behavior. When you look at PBIS, we're looking at consistency. So you can see our ovals here. Within the school community, we have to be using and having a common vision of what our, what our schools look like, feel like, and sound like. We need to all be using the same language. So if I'm walking to Alex DePato and talking with him, it should be the same language I'm walking into a fifth grade room and also using. And we need to have common practices. Again, whether I'm in the lunchroom or out, I'm, I'm out outside at recess. So some big ideas, positive behavior support is a process for teaching children. I know when I would grew up as a child, I knew what was expected of me. Many of our students need to be taught how to behave appropriately. We need to give them the supports that they deserve. Secondly, it's not a curriculum. I think that's very important. There's no textbook, there's no pamphlet. It's basically a framework to identify the needs look at the strategies, and evaluate the practice towards reaching that success. Our kiddos behind me are very familiar with PROUD. So we look at perseverance, respect, ownership, unity, and dedication. I know this is small, but you'll have a chance to look at this a little bit closer. So the kiddos know that in the classroom, how do they show perseverance? How do they show respect, ownership, unity, and dedication? When they are in the restroom, again, how do they show those five key parts of truly being a proud eagle? We have to recognize the positive behavior, and that's what our kids are going to talk about with regards to the vending machine. Once we've introduced the positive behavior, once we have explicitly taught the behavior, we now need to recognize on a very regular basis. Kids like to be recognized. Adults like to be recognized. Here's a friend named Wyatt. Wyatt was one of our Soaring Eagle Awards. So elementary, again, across the district, we do a weekly small prize where teachers nominate kiddos, not for perfect behavior, but kiddos who have shown how to be a proud eagle throughout the week. They may have made mistakes throughout the week, but they learned from their mistakes and they moved on. We do monthly grade level rewards. We do end of quarter school-wide rewards. So that might be an assembly. That might be the Smizers dropping off 388 pumpkins to Live Elementary School at 6.30 in the morning. So we look at something that is school-wide that our kids would enjoy doing. I know we have our student council who's part of designing those and structuring those school-wide rewards because I often say our school is only as strong as our students. We have a Soaring Eagle Award in each of the elementary buildings. So every marking period, the teachers nominate two students from every classroom. They get a certificate signed by a state representative, get that fun, squishy eagle that Wyatt's holding, and then they get to have a party celebration with a few of um, the administration staff and office staff at the buildings. And then we have bus recognition. Some of our buildings are recognizing for a bus of the month or a bus race. So again, knowing that it is not just in the classroom, it's not just in the hallway, but it is consistent and pervasive throughout our entire building. 
Here's an example, and this is simply from another school year, but you can see how the grade level rewards and the school-wide rewards come into play. The school-wide rewards, again, are quarterly, so four quarters in a school year. You can see assemblies are often embedded into the PBIS reward schedule. And then on these PBIS days, kiddos, what do you all wear? They wear their proud t-shirts. So every kiddo receives a proud t-shirt and every staff member, we wear our proud t-shirt on PBIS reward day. So I would love to introduce to you again um, some of the friends that I brought with me. So Maya, Alex, Luca, and Natalie. And they did a fantastic job deciding what they wanted you to know about their vending machine. So I'm going to let the kiddos come up. Hello everyone, I am Natalie Mung from my elementary school here to talk about the book vending machine at our school. It is a fantastic new addition to our school and teachers and students love it. The bookworm book vending machine is a good way to inspire kids to show proud behavior every day so that they can earn tokens for books. This awesome machine has a wide selection of books to choose from, including Fly Guy, Dogman, and many more. There are nonfiction, fiction, poetry, and art books, just to name a few. We are very proud to have the only book vending machine in the Dover Area School District. This is all I have to say, and thank you for listening. Hi, I'm Luca Hetrick, and I'm a third grader at LIB. The book vending machine was paid for by the LIB PTO. Thank you, PTO, and thank you to all the LIB families and friends who support the PTO fundraisers. The planning for the book vending machine started last year. It was delivered to our school last month in January. Thank you to the Dover staff who worked hard to get the machine through the front doors. All the kids at LIB were so excited to see the new book vending machine. Hi, Dover School Board. My name is Maya DePato and I am in first grade. Our book vending machine is just like a real vending machine. We can get tokens by having good, proud behavior. We use the tokens to get a brand new book that we can keep forever. We love the book vending machine. Thank you. Good morning, good evening, Dover School Board. My name is Alex DePato, and I'm in second grade. We had a ribbon cutting ceremony to celebrate our book vending machine. The kids that read over a thousand minutes during our readathon were able to pick a book from first. They earned a token, and now we are going to watch an awesome video about our book vending machine. Thank you.
And we do have a lot of PTO parents here tonight, and we could not have done this without them. Um, we joked about that getting it into the building. Um, I kind of hid in my office and figured they'll figure it out. Um, so if anyone wants to do a vending machine, the only thing is remember how heavy it truly is because it really is a solid machine. Um, so I'd like to um, turn this over to Mrs. Fazek, the high school principal, because like I said, this PBIS school-wide approach is in every building K through 12. And I'm excited for you to hear how PBIS is used even the, in the high school. And kids behind me, I want you to pay extra attention because this is going to be you in a few years. Do you mind if I ask a question quick in regards to your vending machine? Absolutely. How do your books get replenished? How do our books get replenished? Does anyone know that? Come on up, Maya. Maya. No. So we we get we show the book that we want, and then we put in the token, and we. You get your book, right? We get. We get our book then. Right. And then we keep it. And that's the best part, is they get to keep it. So answer your question. Great job, Maya. Be careful you don't fall, sweetheart. Um, we have staff who have graciously donated books for our vending machine. So at LIBE, and Kara does not know this, but there probably have been in the past month over 100 books donated by LIBE teachers. So a lot of our teachers do a Scholastic Book Club every month, and their shelves are teeming with books. So a lot of times the teachers use their bonus points that they get to order books that they know kids would like for the vending machine. We've also had a little girl, um, Ellie is her name, who said, Mrs. Bookenizer, I want to donate books to the book vending machine. May I do that? I said, absolutely. Um, so she brought in books also for our book vending machine. So when I say it's a true community vending machine, it definitely is, um, is just that. That's great. And one more question. When they get the token, do they then use the token the very day they get it? Is that how that works? <laughs> Normally when a kid gets their token, they are asked to come up to the book vending machine because they did show their proud behavior. So yes, they do come up after they're announced to get a token, and they do put in the machine to get their book. Great. You can get a token from showing your proud behavior and showing your teachers that you are a good student when it comes to learning in school, and you pay attention, and you do your work, and that's how you can earn a token. And like they call you up so that you can get their token because they think that you are responsible enough to have one because you showed that proud behavior and you showed your positive behavior while learning every day in school. Good. Where is your book vending machine located? So when kids walk in, they're delighted every day because the book vending machine is in the lobby. So right when they walk through those doors, there it is to surprise them. They can see all the books that are in there every single day. Thank you. I have to follow that? <laughs> Wonderful. I wish I could see high school students just as excited about a book. Uh, that, oh, that would just warm my heart. Um, but it, we do have things at the high school, but it looks a little different at the high school. So I won't um, take too much time, but I just wanted you to see that this is something that carries on um, and, and we do. So we use something that's called Proud Points, and it comes from our Proud Expectations. So if you click on that uh, green link, this is what our matrix looks like. Um, so it's very similar to what you saw in the elementary school. It gets a little bit bit more complex because we're looking at not just the classrooms, the hallways and bathrooms, the cafeteria, virtual, but if you scroll up a little bit, you'll see that we extend to, now we've got to think about the parking lot and we've got to think about online, we've got to think about cell phones, student drivers, so we extend it even further than what they start as in elementary school. So bumping back um, to, the, to the presentations, what we have done is ours, oh, go back one slide, there you go, oh, Morning, oh one back. That's okay. Morning, ladies. Other way. Okay. 
So what we have is, while she's going back in the slides, is our kids aren't big on, on tokens by the time that they get to the high school or handing them tickets or things like that. It's all about electronics, right? It's all about their phones, but we try to go away from the phones and we use their iPads for this. So we actually had a student last year, uh, Eli Slothauer, who went on to Carnegie Mellon, but was one of our CTE students and physics students as well. He, with the help of Mr. Brian Bond, created this app. It is our Dover Proud Points app. So on their iPads, all of the students, if you look at the graphic that's on the bottom and you see the D with the claw, that is their DHS Proud app. And when they open it, if you look on the right-hand side, when a student's open it, and I asked Mr. Perkins about this already, and I use Daniel as an example, it says, hello, it has their name because they sign in with their Google ID. And they have a choice of a camera or they can click to see how many uh, proud points that they have. If they click to see how many proud points they have, it'll send them an email and tell them how much that it has. Um, if they click on the camera, every single teacher has a barcode that we wear on the back of our badges. So when we see one of the behaviors in the proud points matrix that they are displaying that proud positive behavior, we just have them get out their iPads. I use this at lunch, walk around, scan it. They take a picture of it. That automatically comes to me, which you can see on the left-hand side. It says, hello, Jennifer Fazek. It says, do you want to award a point? I'll get an email. I'll give that student the point. It'll award it to them and they collect their points. It's all based on a spread spreadsheet system. I don't understand it. I am not into all that technology and writing an app, but it's a pretty simple system from what I understand. Um, and Mr. Bond helps me. He's on our PBIS committee and he'll, he helps me to track to see how many students have how many points, how many points we're collecting. And then we do things with these points. So they're collecting them. So I want to show you just a couple of things that we do. If we go to the next slide, well, uh, we do have student of the month, by the way, that we do recognize students nominate our teachers, nominate students, they're voted on and we still have our student of the month um, winners. But then with these proud points, we can do things like class competitions. And we can say between the different grade levels in a couple of weeks span, who can earn the most proud points? Who can display the most, the, the best behaviors? And then what we give them is we work with the cafeteria um, and we can give them, uh, they love their chips, they love their ice cream sandwiches, and we can give them a little bit of a reward at lunch when they're, when they're going through. Just a small little token, but when you give them free food to high schoolers, whoo, you have, it's, it's the smiles that you get with the books when you can give them free foods. We also do point challenges. So maybe we're working on focusing on a certain behavior. Um, right now we're working on bathroom behaviors. Let's just say we're working on bathroom behaviors. Um, but as we're talking about them and things get better and we can be giving and earning those points for those, we might give a point challenge to say, hey, in this two week span, can we as a school earn a thousand points? Well, we have about a thousand students. So it's really asking in a two week span for every kid to earn one point. So that's kind of how we break it down to see what it is. From the points that they earn and they can see how many they have, we have items that we purchased last year through a grant um, and we put in our red zone. So they can walk in and buy Dover gear. They can get a lanyard, um, they can buy um, t-shirts for, I think it's five points for a t-shirt and they we even have some windbreakers so that they are still being proud to be a Dover Eagle. In addition to that, that we have some raffles and I'm going to show you an assembly that was student generated, teacher generated. They put it all together um, and we give away gift cards in that. Those gift cards, just like the teachers at the elementary school, we don't have a PTO, but our teachers for dress down days, instead of giving $5 to give towards uh, an organization where uh, our charity, they bought $5 gift cards or in some cases bigger and donated to them. And then we gave them to the kids like a $5 rudders card. That's $5 in gas. That's big right now um, for kids. So $5 at Subway. That's a lunch they can stop and get. So we do those uh, on and off again so that the students are able to do. So the video that I have here just to end, just to set this up, it's only about three minutes. Um, we did, we wanted to use our new pool. So we did a diving competition with our staff. We had some teachers that were willing to do this, bless them. I would not be doing that unless I'm in like full costume. Then I might dive into that pool. Um, they did that. We had two students who you see as Caden Geiger and Jared Espiritu. Uh, they're in the physics department. So they work with Mr. Bond. Mr. Bond telecasted this live from the pool deck to all of the classrooms. The students who had the highest proud points and earned the most, we invited them onto the pool 
school deck to watch this live. Um, and then students, based on their proud points, they were entered into a raffle. As many proud points as they had was how many times that they could be entered into this raffle to earn these $5 gift cards that they were given. So I'm just gonna jump in here just to show you if you can press play and you can see just a little bit of what they had and we didn't take away from instructional time. Morning, ladies and gentlemen, we've got a great show for you planned today. I'm Kane Geiger. During this half hour segment, we're going to draw some prize winners while you get to watch some of your favorite teachers attempt to not make fools of themselves <laughs> in a one time only diving competition. The kids were laughing. Everybody was was really enjoying it. Um, this cost very little money um, to, to do, and it was all generated by our teachers and our students. So we want to do some more things, and we want to get students involved in the next one. If you'd like to see the entire thing for what it looked like, if you go onto our... Um, our uh, Instagram page in our bio, there is a link that you can go to see this. And this was, do again, done during MMA, which is our mid-morning academy, so no instructional time was lost for any type of, type of an assembly. So that's just a little bit about uh, PBIS at the, at the high school. Okay. Any board member have any questions or comments? Okay. Mrs. Wickenheiser, Mrs. Fasick, and Myra, Alex, Luca, and Natalie, we thank you very much for your presentation tonight. Okay, the next item on our agenda is uh, our first public comment. It is a three-minute comment period. Is there anybody in the audience that would like to make a public comment? Craig Kendig, Willop Drive, and I'm simply going to ask, on February 5th, I sent an email to the board and the superintendent requesting information. Tuesday night, I addressed the board again, requesting that information, and I'm wondering now, when am I gonna get that information that I requested? If you need your memory refreshed, I'm looking for 1920, 2021, 2122, student population of the district, number of administrators, and I'd like you to define what that means because we can all have different definitions 
I'm kind of looking at from assistant principal on up. Maybe there's others that I'm not thinking of, and I'm looking for the number of uh, teachers in the district for those three years. Those three years is when Washington Township, we had Crawl Town, and then we closed Crawl Town. I'd like to see what the difference is from when we had Crawl Town to current without Crawl Town. And my second request was, I'd like to know how much revenue we're bringing in via the local income tax. And I would need clarity on that. Are you telling me that 1.4% brings in this amount or zero, one-tenth of 1% brings in this amount? I, I can work with it either way. I can do the math on it. Based on what I read the other day in, in your budget report, it looked to me like we're bringing in about 400,000 for every one-tenth of 1% real estate tax. But I'd like you guys to tell me so I'm working with accurate numbers. Okay. Again, when can I expect to see this? We'll have to get with the administration to get them for you. And I can't give you time. I'll okay. have to check with them. Okay. Okay. Again, understand, All February right. 5th. Okay. I sent it in initially. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else for public comment? Yes, sir. Good evening, everybody. Sorry, I apologize. This is my first time being at a school board meeting. Had the opportunity to come here and listen to my kids speak tonight. And when you offered it open for public comment, talked with the uh, high school principal, asked that this was an opportune time to talk about the agricultural um, education that is provided at the high school. And with the incoming budget cuts due to um, the things that you guys are seeing this year, um, thought it might be a good opportunity to speak to that. Um, my son who graduated in uh, last year um, was actively involved in all the agricultural sciences in the department that it offered. And it actually provided a strong, strong foundation for him to get into the trades of which he is currently in right now. The agricultural department gave him an understanding of not only the agricultural sciences, the biological engineering of what, is, um, what it's a part of, but it also gave him an understanding of mechanical engineering, um, farming and equipment, biological understanding of the animals and their feed processes and everything that's associated with it. And as Dover is an agricultural um, community, we find, I see extreme value in keeping whatever we can to be part of the agricultural sciences that Dover has become uh, known for. My son also, um, when it came time for him to do a NOCTI test, um, I believe it's that mechanical aptitude test, um, Mr. Bowen actually had representatives from local businesses come and evaluate the students who were taking these tests. And because my son did so well, he was immediately offered a job because of the mechanical skills and the aptitude that he had that he learned from Mr. Bowen in this class. So this agricultural department that Dover has is very well recognized and it, is, um, it has become known throughout uh, uh, the communities as a specialty for Dover areas because of how the kids score in some of these um, national testing, or I'm sorry, like regional test um, testing sites that they go, uh, that they perform at. Um, many students who were part of these uh, classes that have been taught by Mr. Bowen have gone on to become great tradesmen. And I just encourage you and implore you to really look hard at making sure that funding stays within that department so that these kids can continue to grow and understand what the agriculture Cultural, um, what the agricultural department is about, how important it is for, um, for our communities and for the future of us who need food to be able to, to live on and them having an understanding of it and their involvement with it. Um, I think it's truly important that you guys take a good hard look at making sure that we continue that funding for, uh, for that specific area of the high school. So thank you very much for your time. Before you leave, can we just get your name and address, please? Yes, I apologize. My name is Joseph DePato. Last name is spelled D-E-P-A-T-T-O. I reside at 3034 Jody Lane in Dover. Okay, thank you. Thank you guys for your time. Anybody else for public comment? Seeing none, we'll move on to the next item, which is board president's communication. 
We did not have any executive session this evening. Now we'll move right into our committees. First committee is our comprehensive plan and curriculum and professional development. Since Mr. Eifert and Mrs. Britton are not here, Mrs. Herman, your report, please. Thank you, Mr. Amick. <clears throat> okay, <clears throat> during this meeting, Mrs. Halk reviewed the process that will be used to review, revise, and write curriculum. She presented us with the templates that teachers will use to write curriculum moving forward. Two documents will be posted on the district website after the curriculum receives board approval. The first document will list the standard and what the standards indicate that students should know, understand, and be able to do. The second document will be a unit map that divided the curriculum into units and provides more detailed information regarding what will be taught in each unit. Mr. Benton, the director of CTE, gave us a more in-depth look at the programs we offer in our CTE program. Mr. Benton shared websites that list the occupations that are in high demand and are deemed high priority by the Pennsylvania Department of Labor and Industry. These are sources that are used to ensure that the courses we offer in our CTE programs are current and kept up with the workforce demand. Mr. Benton reviewed some of the grants that are awarded to us to offset the costs of running our CTE programs, such as the Perks Grant, excuse me, the Perkins Grant, Equipment Grants, and Pennsylvania Smart Grant. Mr. Benton reviewed each program and shared the course progressions each student must follow in order to become credentialized. He reviewed the, the Crow curriculum student organizations that our CTE students can join and previewed some programs that fulfill upcoming workforce needs. Any questions? I hope not. Anybody I'll direct you to Mr. Benton. <laughs> there are any. Anybody have any questions for Mrs. Herman and the curriculum committee? I have okay. a question. The curriculum's up for review this year. Is it social studies and science? Mrs. Halk. There was a curriculum cycle, and that curriculum cycle got halted during oh. COVID. Oh, okay. So no curriculum writing took place. So I kind of have to redesign that cycle. Okay. Um, so I'm doing that, trying to figure out what pieces are missing, what needs to be revised. So this year we are doing art, music, and physical education because we don't have curriculum for that. So that's kind of a high priority. Mm -hmm. um, and then once we get that done, I think we're going to look at we're going to look at everything to make sure it's good. Um, and then I will develop a, a five-year curriculum cycle. So we will revise curriculum every month. On that note, then, as far as physical education, are they possibly talking about a swim curriculum for the middle school? At this time, we're just using what's on the state standards. So we're only writing curriculum for what we currently offer for this year. Now, once I get word that we're going to be, if we get word from the board that we're adding a swim curriculum, then we'll start writing. Yeah, thank you. Any other comments? Okay. We'll move into our next committee, Human and Fiscal, Mr. Deshaux. All right, we had a couple of items, <clears throat> well, more than a couple. Uh, first thing, we had a state budget update. Matt provided the committee with a brief overview of Governor Wolf's proposed 2022-2023 state budget. This will be his final and legacy budget. His proposal expands the state commitment to public education, students, and schools. The overall state budget includes significant increases in total spending without raising any taxes. Governor Wolf is proposing increases in basic education funding, special education funding, pupil transportation. In addition, he is proposing charter school reform and increasing minimum wage to $12 per hour with a multi-year pathway to 15 per hour. While the increased funding and in charter school reform could help the district's financial situation, we cannot count on the additional revenue or savings from charter school reform until the state passes the budget. Republican legislation have already challenged the governor's revenue uh, and ex the projections claiming that they're unrealistic and may make the state's existing structural imbalance worse until the state budget is passed. 
The district will have to use the projections from the 2021-2022 school year and plan on level funding and no charter school reform. The administration also reviewed the recommendations for the reduction from Tuesday night's budget presentation. As a reminder, that include budget impact to special education adjustments of uh, $416,965 the reduce an elementary math coach of 126,374, reduce three elementary encore positions, two vacant, one was a, uh, uh, what was it? Furlough. What was it? Furlough. There you go, furlough. Uh, that was uh, $326,039, a reduce in elementary extra duty positions of 13,920, reduce fourth, fourth grade section, fourth section of third grade at Live Elementary of 142,000, reduced gifted teacher at Dover High School for 137, reduced English teacher at Dover High School for 142, a reduced district social worker of 121, reduced district computer technician of 81,000, with a total savings of 1.4 million, bringing it down to just about 3 million, I believe, Matt. Is that correct? Thereabouts. In addition, the administration plans to <coughs> review additional topic, topics for consideration and discussion at the March 15th board meeting. The, they are as follow. Review of secondary programs offering required personnel. Review of CT E programs offering, review of an SRO options. We currently have one of them retiring, so we'll have to look at that. Review of student walking routes and transportation impact. Review of all extracurricular activities and athletic programs. Review of administrative operations, review of all proposed building and department budgets, and review of all revenue prod, uh, projects, projections. The administration plans to hold a committee, committee meeting of the whole for additional budget discussions on March 17th at 6 p.m. Any of the other board members who were there, did I miss anything or would you like to add anything? No. I think that was, everybody okay with that? Okay. All righty, any other comments or questions on that? And we didn't have any committee for the facilities, safe and supportive schools, we combine that with facilities or with the budget. So there is no report on that. Next item we have is, is the elementary attendance boundaries. We need a motion to approve the revised elementary attendance boundaries effective at the beginning of the 22-23 school year. So move. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any questions or comments on this motion? Yes, I'd like to have a discussion on this um, because I'm not real clear as to why we're doing the, the moving now when we don't know what's coming in the future. Okay, I know we saw the developments, um, but obviously some of them are just getting started. Phase two of the, um, the one back beside Weigelstown. I can't think what it's called, but anyway. So if we move everybody, if we move the boundaries, and then we move the children, then we're going to have to move a teacher from, from each grade level, except I think third, to, from Weigelstown to North Salem. But then that, that does, then that leaves only two teachers per grade level at Weigelstown. So why don't we wait? So we're filling up, what we're doing is we're taking Weigelstown and we're moving the children so we fill that building, why don't we just wait until the attendance demands more? I, I realize we're projecting next year's kindergarten is large. I'm not as concerned about the kindergarten this year because they've already added an extra teacher, so I know they have four there. And that teacher could loop into first grade, which is a great thing to do. I've done it, it's wonderful. So that's, and keep her own children. That would be a plus for that. So I just need this explained. I have looked at these numbers like five days now, and I'm, I'm not getting it. Great questions. You're right. It, it might seem easier to wait till we get the kids. However, 
if we get the kids at different times, some move in in July, some move in in August, some move in in September, and so on. We're going to have them trickling in, and we could be moving teachers and kids after the school year starts. So we're trying to be proactive and plan for the future, even though the future is not perfectly predictable, rather than upset classrooms, teachers, and moving back and forth once the school year starts and into the school year. I think that's one reason. Is there anything I'm missing, Mr. Ulmer? Uh, no, I would just, I mean, I would just add that um, we're establishing the boundaries and, and now so that families would be able to make adjustments and accommodate now versus a piecemeal approach or trying to do it as you would need to maybe move one bus run or two bus runs. We're making the move now so that, or we're proposing to make the move now so that it is already complete and a plan is in place. Again, trying to be proactive in this situation, knowing where the growth is going to be at Weigelstown, um, and we just don't know how they're gonna come in from a grade level perspective. It also helps families to plan so they know where they'll be, rather than starting in one school and then having to move them later. Okay. Okay, well, I, I guess I'm kind of wrapped up on that, moving to Weigel's, or excuse me, moving to North Salem, and then we may have to move them all back again. So that's what I don't get, because as they fill up, these developments fill up and the kids do come in. And I know every year we get some kids registering in August, last minute, and, but I know we also end up that there's children that never show, so we have children that pull out too. So I don't know, I'm just thinking, why don't we wait at least another year to see What's happening? I guess because I know we have to pay the teachers to move, correct? We so do. that's gonna that's in the budget also then for every teacher that moves. We do. And then if we have to move them back again, then we'll have to pay it again. So I'm. We would do our best not to move them too quickly, so that somebody's not moving in August and then again in December. Um, and, and it is kind of. A guessing game at this point we don't know where those kids will end up what grade levels or how many in each grade level so we're doing our best with this proposal to plan for the future and make room in Weigelstown for the growth that we're expecting over the next few years okay, are, just, are you getting complaints from teachers right now that there's overcrowding and from parents and from, because I haven't gotten any, uh, are we getting complaints from? We have a very large kindergarten class at Weigelstown this year. I'm not hearing complaints. There's four teachers, so. And what will it cost us to do this now since we're, what is going to be the added cost of doing this this year? Is there going to be an added, a significant added cost since we're looking at cutting? You we know? will. We will need to move probably three or four teachers from Weigelstown to North Salem if the numbers pan out the way we think they will. Okay. And we have to, contractually, we are obligated to pay the teachers a certain number of hours to move to a different building. Okay. And we chose this option as opposed to moving all K to two teachers from two buildings to the other two and all three to five from two to the other two. So it's much less this way, and that was one of the one of the considerations when we made this recommendation. Any other questions or comments? Mrs. Allman, we're ready for the vote. Mr. Wolverton, you can give me your voice vote. It's a yes, go with it.
Motion carries five yes, two no. Mrs. Herman and Mr. Rawhauser. Hey, thank you. Next item is miscellaneous. Does any board member have any comments or questions at this point? I have a comment. Uh, don't be afraid to ask questions because I did tonight and we got our boards looking a lot better to read than they were before. Anybody else? If yeah, not, Mr. Amy, one quick thing. I, I was very serious about the idea of co contacting the governor's action team concerning this budget. Somebody from this school district, and I know Nathan or Superintendent or Matt, you know. Okay. Because I've worked on, I've worked on uh, general staffs. I've worked on in the you know the Justice Department, and oftentimes these uppers have hidden funds that no one actually knows about. And there's a possibility when they see something that could be a problem, they can step in and fund it to some degree or take a look at it a different way. Because I've watched it on military bases continually where you can change the funding authorization on stuff and slip money in. So, okay. Thank you. Take a look at I anybody have, else. I have some questions. <laughs> Pointing to Charlie. Um, I, in regards to some of the things mentioned that are going to come up for consideration, can I ask any questions now or do you want me to wait? Um, I, I just have a couple, but I can wait. I don't know. It depends. Uh, we're going to have the conversations administratively. We're bringing, we're, I informed during the Finance and Facilities Committee that these would be the conversations that will, ha that will take place administratively over the next four weeks so that we can present at the uh, March 15th meeting. However, if you have comments or things that you would like the administration to take into consideration while we are having those conversations, I'm happy to hear those. Uh, I just had some questions like, um, for one, <clears throat> I guess I have more than a couple. Review of secondary program offering, does that mean um, high school, right? And then like, what is that referring to? program offering secondary. is that like for instance the CTE program or are you, start, are you referring to other things we're looking at all courses all courses and the number of students taking the courses and the number of teachers needed mm -hmm. okay and in regards to the CTE program is that under consideration for the whole program to be or just like you're talking it out like do we cut some none you know that kind of thing like is that where you're at like you just don't even have any idea right now right I mean that's the that's the point of what we'll have the conversations yeah. for administratively to say how many kids we have in programs yeah much like the other departments in the high school the CTE essentially is a department in the high school that has students participating in various electives and in the completer versus the concentrator. concentrator disciplines. So is there any efficiencies we can make in combining some courses if we should have to, mm -hmm. you know, remove some electives, but when you remove an elective, um, that has adverse impact to the whole schedule. So if you take an elective away that kids participate in, ultimately they then have to put those kids somewhere else. So then another elective has to be available or you know, and then there's class size requirements based on those. And CT has different class size requirements based on safety in some of those rooms. So we really have to do a deep dive. And that's why we're actually starting tomorrow with some of those conversations with uh, our middle school and uh, our, our high school programs. Um, in regards to CTE program, is, is it possible to separate out anything from that and cut it and still have the program? Like, is that something that could still be done or is it a comprehensive thing like you have to do so I, much cutting if you were going to cut like your question is wonderful and your question is one that i will ask mr benton as we go through this because he's our expert in-house yeah. on the curriculum side i asked the financial questions um he taught he mrs Fasic, and other academic side of the yeah. house 
talks about how the schedule can actually happen, <coughs> how the students actually need to fit into those schedules. Mm -hmm. So those are the exact questions that we'll be discussing um, to see if programs, if we can still offer all 10 <laughs> of our programs um, and the costs associated with that. Um, and then I guess in regards to York Tech, um, should we have any deliberation or discussion about, you know, sending that letter in? Like what, I mean, are you, I know you're having a meeting coming up mm -hmm. to find out um, what, how exactly did you put it? The quota. Quota. Mm -hmm. So based on that conversation, you might know whether or not we would want to put a letter in or is that not consideration as a consideration as far as withdrawing from being a member community? The, bo the board would need to direct yeah. us to do that. Oh, gotcha. So there would be need to be a discussion yeah. if the board wants to do that. Yeah. Or wants to consider that. I guess there's so many questions around this that like we all value what we have at Dover through the C D program. I don't know enough about it to know whether or not it can still survive if parts of it are cut or not. And that's where my questions are coming from. And so, you know, and I don't know how detrimental that would be to our students to not have the maybe you can answer this. If there if we do with say we hypothetically we withdraw from York Tech what do the students here in our district do then if they have an interest in a program at York Tech? I mean, they just wait till their graduation and then take, they can't go. And then, so it's graduate and then go do that thing on your own, like normal, like college kind of stuff. Well, yeah. like an they, evening if class. If they graduate, that those programs are options for some kids that we don't have here. Right. And for kids who might not otherwise be motivated to stay in high school. Quite frankly, mm. so many things, um, and then the SRO is probably my last question. So, if the gentleman retires, what are some um, like thoughts surrounding that? Like, I know you said maybe you hire somebody to replace, or maybe not. Like, maybe something else, or just no security at all. Like, you just don't know yet. Or well, no, I, I had made the comment during the finance committee, it's the administration, administration's obligation to bring options to the board. So yeah. can we accommodate the same level of service with one that we have with two right now? The answer is no, mm -hmm. we can't. Because obviously two is more than one, that's simple yeah. math. Two bodies is, is, yeah. is simple math. But is there a way that we restructure how we do things? Just the same as if we have five math teachers is more ideal than having four math teachers, but can we still deliver? Because we have a retirement of a math teacher, we're going to maybe reduce one math teacher. We're, we're, we're recommending not replacing that through attrition. So we can still offer programs and resources or uh, offerings with four math teachers or five. What are our options to deliver a safe and lear a learning environment mm -hmm. with one resource versus two? Mm -hmm. That is what I need to bring to you as me doing my job. And then you may tell me, as the board may come back to tell the administration, mm -hmm. we value and we want two resource officers. Okay, here's the cost associated with that, and I'll put that into the budget. You know, that kind of thing. So we're just presenting... The objective that we have in the budget process moving forward is we provide you with options mm -hmm. and you're essentially telling us how to fit those options into the puzzle mm -hmm. and what is acceptable as far as the final budget is concerned. No, I get it. It's so hard. Matt, but, real quick, when yes. you talk about the uh, resource officer, are you talking uh, law enforcement? With, yes, the Northern, with York region, uh, Northern York County Regional Police Department, uh, we pay for two police officers, one is at our high school, one is at our middle school, full-time. Uh, meaning full-time, meaning all 180 student days plus evening activities and other things like that, we pay the salary and benefit of those two resource officers to Northern York Regional. Um, we have, like I said, we're evaluating all of our school district employees. When we, when we have retirements, we have one retirement of one of those officers. So it's our role. To tell you that, we have a retirement. What is the what is the desire to replace that position? Or do we achieve some level of 
agreement that one SRO throughout the district would handle our needs. So that is what I will work with the administration, Mr. Perkins and the other, administrator, other administrators to get feedback on how we could potentially make it happen with one resource officer or getting the second one uh, back into the district. Okay. Replacing that. The reason I ask is because Senator Regan and I had a conversation one time about the idea of uh, retired federal law enforcement officers. We're all authorized to carry weapons, mm -hmm. doing it doing it for a part time job, ten to fifteen dollars an hour. Back up a cop inside of a school. Yeah, that's there an option, go. and those are things that we look at. We look at grant opportunities. We also look at does the sheriff's department offer a program. Does the, you know, is there a private industry that offers a program? What are our options? That is what our administrative job is to come back to the district. But there's also relationships that are built, you know. Um, the best product and the best service that we're, is, we're, is being offered is from Northern York Regional Police Department, and we're, we have that. So we have the best option. What we would be bringing would probably be a lesser option than what that is, but that's because that comes at a cost, and right. that's what we're evaluating. We're evaluating the costs of the programs and things and, and uh, resources that we offer our district. So um, that's, what, that's what the administratively, that's what we have to do in, in having dialogue with the board and allowing you to have conversation back and forth to direct the administration as to what you want. Yeah. Plus, we also would ideal have an officer walking through each elementary school every day. Ideally, but we don't currently have that. But we don't. No. I mean, we have they, officers. They do rounds. The officer Schaefer, I don't know if he's at every building every day. I don't. The officer who's on duty through Northern York does need to stop in and do a walkthrough on each of the elementary buildings. It may be Officer Schaefer, some days it may be another officer that's on call. Fair day. enough. Sorry. So My have, apologies. We have a revolving door of we get to know all of the officers. Sorry, I misspoke. Thank you. I think it needs to be said that nobody wants to make any of these cuts. This right. is this is not fun for anyone. We are responsible to present the options to you. That's we're we're doing our due diligence when we present the options that Matt mentioned. Um, would we like to keep everything we have? Absolutely. We we owe it to the community to see what we can do with a five million dollar deficit. Yeah, and and I know that there's so much on the table that like I was stressed all weekend trying to capture the understanding and the depth and breadth of these decisions all weekend long. It was like a lot, and that's all I'm saying. Like. I, I, I'm just, I want to know the thought process, and, and as you deliberate and discuss, it's almost like I wish I was there, you know, hearing, so I can hear what's going on, but I know that's not, that's not our job, but I'm just saying, I wonder if there's more opportunity to just know what the process, what processes and thought processes are going, you know, and taking place prior to, I know you said you're going to have a web page. I love that mm -hmm. for transparency. Are you putting right on the Dover? Like homepage? Yes. So there'll be a link I like loud and proud click. right on the front. Okay. This is our budget 22, 23 resource page. Oh. With links to maybe school board like minutes yeah, or something? Yeah, it'll have all the presentations that we have oh, okay. uh, budgetarily. Any presentation we provide, we'll have all those resources right there. Anybody have anything else? Okay. Then we'll go into our second public comment, which is a two-minute. Is there anybody that would like to make any public comment? Not seeing any. Future meetings, we have our next voting meeting will take place on March the 15th at 7 o'clock. And then Thursday, March 17th, will be our next committee meeting at 6 and the planning meeting at 7. Anybody have anything else? No. Do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Motion is second. All those in favor of adjourning say aye. 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 Meeting adjourned. Thank you all for coming.